In this video, we will be covering how to use cargo releases. We will cover creating cargo releases, generating invoices from cargo releases, using cargo release lists. To create a cargo release, we expand the warehousing entry at the left. Then we choose cargo releases. For the purpose of this video, we can use the document view to create a cargo release. But you can also use the list view as well. Next, we select add from the toolbar. And the system will open the cargo release wizard. Wizards guide you step by step through your data entry process by providing easy to follow instructions at the top of the window. In the first step, the system will generate a number for you. The creation date is today's date and the release date refers to the date that the goods will be taken out of your warehouse. By default, also today's date. You can modify this by selecting the field and it will display a calendar. Or you can simply type into the data field if you prefer. The employee is the user currently logged in creating this cargo release. Release 2 is the final consignee that will receive the cargo. If you click the Change button in the Address field, you can choose from any of the shipper's alternate locations in his profile. Now click Next and proceed to the next step. Here you will enter the carrier information. You can simply choose a carrier that will be picking the cargo up from your warehouse. We will skip the other reference number fields and click Next to proceed. In this final step, you will be selecting the cargo that is going to be released. This window will by default list for you the warehouse receipts that are on hand. You can click Inventory at the top if you're releasing goods based on part numbers and not by warehouse receipt numbers. You also have the option of scanning goods with the scan button at the top. This is only possible if you have the barcoding plugin enabled in your system, which allows you to scan the label on the goods and automatically loads goods or items into your cargo release. For now, we will be selecting cargo from the warehouse receipt list, and we will later revisit the loading of cargo by inventory. Each warehouse receipt on this list can be expanded with a plus symbol next to it. This is in the event you wish to partially load cargo inside each warehouse receipt. You can even partially load individual pieces of the cargo listed under each warehouse receipt. To do this, highlight one of the items to partially release and click the Pieces button at the right. This will pop up a window that will allow you to pick the pieces out of the total you wish to partially release. For this scenario, we will load entire warehouse receipts with all contained pieces. We will first apply a filter by consignee to find the cargo I wish to ship easier. Let's click filter at the right, choose standard, and then choose the appropriate customer from the consignee field. This will reduce the list of items on hand to just those pertinent to this cargo lease. Now I will go one by one shading in the white square box next to each warehouse receipt. Once you have selected all the warehouse receipts that will be dispatched with this cargo release, you can click the Finish button at the bottom. We now see the completed document for this cargo release, which can be emailed to customers or agents and printed out to send with the cargo. You can also print labels for your driver to put on the actual cargo by clicking on the arrow next to Print and choosing Print Labels. As you can see, creating cargo releases is quick and easy with Magaya. Now let's create a second cargo release for inventory items by part number. Repeat the same steps as before until you reach the select cargo to ship stage. In this step, you will click the inventory button at the very top. As before, you will be able to expand each part number with the plus symbol next to it, 
revealing specific detail about which warehouse receipts contain that part number. You can choose to ship all items of a certain part number by shading in the box next to the part number. Or you can expand the part number and shade in just individual warehouse receipts. For this video, we will simply highlight the actual part number. Notice we do not shade the box only highlighted the text that shows the part number and click pieces at the right. This will display a window that prompts us for how many pieces of your total on hand pieces you wish to ship. Type in the quantity you wish to ship and click OK leaving the box partially shaded. At this point you can click on finish and complete your cargo release. Now we will explain how to add charges to the cargo release. Once you complete the cargo release, click the edit button at the top. You will now see many more tabs than the wizard made available when initially adding this cargo release. We will now click on the charges tab so that we can input some income charges and bill my customer for handling and storage of his goods. As you can see, all of my predefined charges have been automatically applied. If we want to add an additional fee, we can do so here by selecting Add and then the charge type Income Freight Charge or Income Charge. Income charges are not influenced by weight, dimensions, or time. Income Freight Charges do take the variable's weight, dimensions, and time to pull the rate in. If we would like to remove a charge, we simply select it and choose Delete. As you can see at the bottom, we get a brief financial snapshot of this transaction. The next step is to create invoices from this cargo release. If you had entered any charges manually, you will first have to click OK in order to save them in the database. Then you click on Edit once more and go to the Charges tab. Now you will be able to click the Generate button at the bottom right. A window will appear displaying for you the financial transactions the system will generate. Simply confirm the selection by clicking OK and then selecting Yes. Now we are taken back to the cargo release document and to email or print the newly created invoice. I can click Actions at the top and choose Transaction Listing. The list that appears will display all the transactions that we generated from the Charges tab. You can now right click on these transactions and choose Go to Document. At this point you can email, print, or even receive a payment on this invoice. Now we will cover how to use the cargo release list. First, let's return by opening Warehousing at the left and choosing Cargo Release List. From the list, we can see all cargo releases in my database and filter the list if we wish to see specific data. For example, we will click Filter at the bottom and in the window that appears, choose the appropriate consignee to filter by and click OK. This will now show me only those releases that I have ready for that consignee. Let's add now the column for the release date. Click Actions at the bottom and then click on Choose Columns. This will display a window allowing you to check and uncheck columns from the cargo release list. We will search for Date, which refers to the release date of the cargo, and check mark it. We will then click on this field and drag it to a more accessible place within my columns. Once you click OK, your entire cargo release list is rearranged displaying the columns you need in the order you want them. We will now do an exercise using our newly added columns. I will click the column at the top titled Date, which will order my cargo releases by release date. Next, I will go one by one through the releases that are being dispatched today and setting them in transit. This will improve my customer's experience on my live track system should they log in now to track their cargo. As in any list in Magaya, you can choose to run a report that provides total amounts. Let's do that now by clicking Actions at the bottom 
and hovering your mouse over reports. The extensive list that appears is the criteria by which you can run your reports. For this example, choose by status. The report that appears is very similar to the list except that there are subtotal amounts per status and grand total amounts at the very bottom. Total figures will automatically be calculated for any numeric column you add to the report, such as, for example, expense or income. Now click close at the very bottom and return to the cargo lease list. Let's show you how to export important information to an Excel friendly file. Before exporting, let's filter the list to show just the information that the customer will be expecting at his location. Click filter at the bottom, choose in transit on the status field, and pick the customer from the release to field. This list is now showing only the information that pertains to the cargo on the way to the customer's location. Now let's export. First click on the actions button at the bottom of the list and then choose export. In the window that appears choose export to CSV or HTML and click OK. In the following window click on browse at the top right hand corner choose a folder to export the data into and then click save. Then you can pick and choose the individual columns you wish to export. For example, let's choose number, date, release to, pieces, weight, volume, and carrier. Next, let's click export at the bottom which will generate an Excel friendly file in the Windows directory I specified. This file I can now email to my customer for his reference. This concludes our video on cargo releases.